So we can induce a anti-inflammatory response when we modulate the guts, even for a spinal cord injury, even for a peripheral nerve injury. And ozone can help with this microbiome balance. That's why I put this paper here, just to highlight this idea. So when I have a peripheral nerve injury, instead of just trying to inject local ozone for treatment and try to go directly through the problem in the brachial plexus, we can also address the guts and do rectal insufflation so we can balance the microbiome which will reflect on the inflammatory process in the nerve or in the spinal cord. Um, so just to quickly click over this, um, it's also useful for um, for ringworm lesions. This was a cat that had it right over the eye and we were hesitant to use any other medications that close to the eye and we just put him on ozone ointment and within two weeks he had complete regrowth of the hair. These are four important things that are released which are responsible for all the healing, all the faster healing that we see when we put ozone. And I feel ozone is like the missing element. Uh, it's like you know the missing element of a puzzle when you're solving a puzzle you've put in all the elements together but you're still the picture is not complete and the moment you put ozone inside you start seeing the magic and you see in two months time and this was non-healing for almost seven months and the moment we started using ozone it started shrinking and then it completely closed in just a matter of two months Since I had taught anatomy at Tufts University for almost 20 years, I felt like I could use my anatomical, you know, understanding of where the body was and, and go through this. And I'm just going to go through it and then I'm going to show you what it is. So we have the dog standing in an air in the paralumbar area standing. So there's no anesthesia and you want to have that dog standing up and shave that area when it's standing, because if you don't shave it, it means you shave it prior and you think where it is when they stand up, everything shifts. So you've got to shave it when the animal is standing and use a two inch ozone resistant indwelling catheter. And I'll have pictures of that. Uh, you load up your volume from uh, between 24 and 41 micrograms per milliliter, depending on what you're treating. So if you're treating peritonitis, you want to go to the 40 side. If you're treating cancer, you want to go to the 24 side. It was such a serious you know, uh, peritonitis that there was pus pouring out of the abdomen. So a client of mine who was a forensic pathologist said that adhesions that the dog had on it were um, at least 72 hours after rupture because there was all these adhesions where, the, where I, when I pulled it away, there was pus pouring out all over the abdomen. I opened up the uterus, it so just, pus, came it just pus out. Is so my assumption out of is that the uterus has ruptured and we're just making the incision bigger. We're gonna still try to do something by lavaging the whole abdomen after we get the uterus out of here. But you can see this peritonitis that's there. So we needed to rush in and do her like ASAP. This is all peritonitis, okay? Inflamed everywhere. And her, her uterus is right here. So. And the, the study shows that 40 micrograms, it's exactly the most anti-inflammatory. We tend to use uh, higher concentrations uh, on acute cases and as the case goes to chronicity we should like just in like in wound treatment we should rate lower our dose in order to to go to concentrations as 10 or, or 15. You can see from this diagram of um, the anatomy of the blood of the vascular system that the the gi tract the colon in particular is really rich with blood supply that goes straight to the portal vein so one ml of ozone gas at about 35 micrograms we use um, per pound of body weight so that's our calculation we give it slowly 
Um, if you if you give it fast, of course, you're going to get a big dilation in that in that rectum, which can be uncomfortable. Um, it can make them feel like they have to poop right away, and you don't get necessarily the full benefit. Uh, so we're delivering it to this rich vascular system. Uh, sometimes I'll tell clients to, you know, people are sometimes familiar with suppository medications like compazine. We've used phenobarb in the rectum in days past to try and stop seizures. And this is why, because it has a first pass through the liver. Um, you also get the benefit of, of improving liver function. So any liver case, I'm going to do a rectal insufflation also. But in this case, helping to bring down inflammation in the in the liver due, you know, secondary to medications or the condition itself. And yeah, I had a, I have a case that I didn't post, but it was a bone marrow stem cells uh, therapy combinated with uh, ozone, and we had an amazing uh, response in just one week. It was wow. horrible. So if my pets, like I, I typically will always start with rectal, maybe introduce a minor before I move on to like major or, or um, O3UV, just to make sure the pet is tolerating ozone therapy. Um, if I am doing major autohemotherapy, I like to start my dose really low and be really, really careful with weaker animals because they may be overwhelmed um, if you go too high and that can overwhelm their, um, their antioxidant system because you're introducing so much oxidative stress. So start low, you can always work yourself up. Um, here's the question. You can only use ozone for one thing in your practice, one condition, okay? Which condition do you treat? I feel like I'm gonna have to go with wound healing. Uh, definitely wounds. And I was doing lots of intervertebral disc disease, uh, geriatric conditions and all of that. And I think that also. I'm gonna choose cancer. <laughs> I don't know how to practice without ozone. My ozone generator broke down in two, was it 2009? I was without it for three days and I, I didn't know what to do. <laughs>